I raise my axe over my head and charge the T-Rex. I send my familiar to give him advantage on his attack. I wasn't aware the druids even get familiars. Holy crap! The new guy is cheating already! Barbarian, you charge forward toward the T-Rex and hit it solidly with your axe, causing its beady eyes to regard you with annoyance. And then it reaches down, chomps down onto you with its maw, and swallows. Uh, so wait, I'm, I'm in its stomach now? What? You think wizards are so special? Druids get familiars too, you know. We just call them animal companions. Um, actually, rangers get animal companions. Yes, yes, you're in its stomach now. You start taking acid damage. Okay, good. I'm gonna take out my immovable rod and turn it on. Hey, hey wizard, stop arguing for a second and use your oversized brain to execute Order 52. <laughs> oh, yes, of course, Order 52. I cast Thunder Wave on the T-Rex. The T-Rex fails its saving throw and is pushed 10 feet back, causing the immovable rod to burst out of its chest. Uh, yeah, it's, it's done now. Well done, well done. Welcome to the DM Layer. I'm Luke Hart, and I've been a Dungeon Master since high school. On this channel, I give practical Dungeon Master advice that you can implement at your game table. Today in the Layer, we're gonna be talking about 10 overpowered, game-breaking magic items that will destroy your campaign. There, <laughs> did I hype that up enough? Did I get you all worried? Are you just dying to know what they are? <laughs> <laughs> That's so stupid. Okay, look, let's be clear here. Some of these magic items are hands down game breaking. And the game designers have clearly spent too much time finding traps with their faces. Others are just a little too overpowered and should be adjusted. And then there are some of them that normal dungeon masters would probably have no problem with. But due to trauma to my fragile psyche from repeated bad experiences, I've been forever soured to them and thus they make this list. And let's be clear about what overpowered actually is, because some folks think things like the Luck Blade, Ring of Three Wishes, or Armor of Invulnerability are overpowered. Those aren't overpowered. They're legendary items. Just don't give them to your players until the appropriate levels in the game. I bet half of what we believe to be overpowered magic items are simply a direct result of DMs just going nuts and giving them out way too early in the game. If we exercise restraint, we can avoid many of those issues. When I think overpowered, I'm thinking about a magic item that might be listed as uncommon, but is actually as powerful as a very rare or even legendary item, or a magic item that when placed in the hands of a creative player, or a player with access to the internet, because you know, Google searches are a thing, can be used in ways that make them more powerful than you might otherwise suspect. Oh, and I swear to you that this list won't just be me ranting about these magic items. I'm also going to offer some changes or solutions to them that Dungeon Masters can implement to bring these items back in line with the level of power that their rarity suggests. Oh, and by the way, if you have any questions about this topic or anything else Dungeon Master or D&D related, I have live streams here on YouTube pretty much every Friday at 6 p.m. Eastern US time. Feel free to swing on by, ask some questions, and hang out with us because, you know, we nerds have nothing better to do on Fridays. Number one, Cloak of Displacement. I will rant about this magic item until the end of my days, and I will curse Dalinor's name along with it. The Cloak of Displacement is a rare magic item that causes attacks against you to be made with disadvantage. Now, supposedly, disadvantage averages out to a negative five modifier, but as my buddy Joe explained to me one day, it's actually much worse at the extremes. For instance, when someone with a high armor class, such as Paladin, is wearing it, it can be practically impossible to hit him. Isn't 
that right, Dalinor. But fortunately, I think there is an easy fix for this magic item, besides just tearing it out of the Dungeon Master Guide and hacking into Wizards database and purging it from all memory. And that's to make it an action to turn on its displacement property. That means when you're hit by an attack and you lose its displacement property, you need to use an action to re-enable it. And I would probably also make it very rare at the very least. It's just that good. Number two. Two, broom of flying and winged boots. Okay, this is a two for one because these are both uncommon magic items that essentially give you unlimited flying. Sure, the winged boots place some limits on it, but because you can split up the time limit in small increments, you can essentially fly about, especially in combat, all you want. And unlimited flight for an uncommon magic item is just insane. I mean, the game designers made the wings of flying rare with a limit of one hour of flight roughly every six hours. And then the carpet of flying is very rare. So why the heck are the broom of flying and winged boots uncommon? I'm telling you, somebody's been smoking something. The fix is simple though. They become rare or very rare items. Done and done. Oh, and by the way, just to be clear about how the rules around magic item rarity work, an item's rarity determines roughly when it should be given to the characters. According to the rules, common or uncommon items can be given out at level one. Rare items can be given out at level five or above, very rare items at level 11, and legendary items at level 17. Though just between you and me, I think that's a little bit early to be given those things out at those levels. I would delay things a little bit. Magic items at level one and level five, ooh, I don't know about that. Number three, the decanter of endless water. Let's see, what example can I give you to demonstrate how powerful this common magic item can be? Oh yeah, you can use it to flood an entire dungeon killing everything inside. How's that for powerful? Not convinced? Okay, let's have the group travel to a desert region and corner the market on drinkable water, destroying the entire economy and becoming filthy rich. I gave this to my friend John in my Wonder Panda campaign, and he has wisely exercised an amazing amount of self-restraint in its use. You see, he knows me and knows that if he tries to do either of these things or something else equally crazy, there will be a fast nerf coming to his precious decanter of endless water. And I think the nerf or, um, well, appropriate fix is to simply put a limit on the amount of water it can produce per day. Yes, yes, I get that it will then no longer be a decanter of endless water, but hey, it's that or risk your players flooding the entire world. Number four, Weapon of Warning. This is an uncommon magic item that gives the wielder advantage on initiative rolls and makes it so that he and his companions within 30 feet can't be surprised. Are you kidding me? Can't be surprised? Can't be surprised? Come on. So this weapon steals an entire category of encounters that a dungeon master can deploy against their group, the beloved ambush. I think my ax to grind against this magic item has less to do with it being overpowered and just that it takes away a very interesting and dramatic situation that a group might find themselves in from time to time. Th th this is like telling dungeon masters that they can no longer use dragons or trapped chests in their games. I'm sorry, for me, that's that's just lame. My fix for this magic item is to make it so that only the wielder can't be surprised. Everyone else in the party can. Number five, ever smoking bottle. When I first gave this uncommon magic item to my hand of light group, little did I know the power that I was placing in their hands. They used the ever smoking bottle time and time again to sneak past their foes, escape dangerous situations, and negate terrifying enemies such as high level spellcasters and beholders who need to see in order to use their cool abilities. I think that changing the fog it produces from creating a heavy heavily obscured area to just a lightly obscured area might be a decent fix. However, I personally would probably just limit the amount of times it could be used. Number six, adamantine armor. This uncommon magic item basically just negates critical hits against the wearer. And I'll be honest here, I this, this, this magic item is probably not an actual problem. I've just been emotionally scarred by the time I gave it to my player Ben's Paladin. You see, I would get so excited every time I scored a critical hit and then he would break my heart 
heart when he reminded me that he had adamantine armor on. In fact, my trauma went so deep that I would even do things like have the adamantine weapons of drow be quickly ruined by daylight, lest my players try to smelt them down and create armor from them. This was actually a problem for me, but, but I got help and well, I'm better now. I, I just don't give out adamantine armor anymore. It's mithril armor every time. Number seven, immovable rod. This uncommon magic item is a rod that, as the name implies, cannot be moved. In the hands of players who scour the barren wasteland of Reddit for game-breaking ideas because they have nothing better to do with their time, yeah, bad things can happen. I feel like a fix might be limiting its number of uses or making it very rare, but I also feel like I've been offering these fixes for a lot of these magic items. So you tell me, how would you change the immovable rod to make it less overpowered? Number eight, wands. Yeah, that's right, all wands. Like, why do they have basically unlimited charges? Sure, you're limited to seven or so charges per day, but then they recharge. So basically a wand gives a spellcaster seven additional spell slots to use in every single adventure for the rest of the campaign. Hmm, that sounds a little bit strong. Oh, wh what's that you say? Many wands can even be used by melee classes such as fighters and barbarians? Well, crap, now we're turning melee classes into wizards, are we? Now, that's not powerful. Back in the day, wands had a specific amount of charges, and when they were gone, the wand ceased to function, and this is actually my fix for this magic item. Just make them like old school wands. Set number of charges, and when they're gone, they're gone. Number nine, Vorpal Sword. Okay, yes, this is a legendary magic item, but hear me out. It auto kills a creature on a natural 20. Did, did you catch that? Auto kill, no saving throw, boom, you're dead. Oh, you're fighting the big bad of the entire campaign? Nat 20, baby, dead. And if you're using optional rules like flanking that make getting advantage super easy in the game, then this sword becomes even more powerful because the chances of a nat 20 double. So what's my fix for this? Make there be a saving throw to avoid death. Sure, it can be a high saving throw, like maybe a DC 17 constitution saving throw, but you gotta give them a fighting chance. If they fail the save, they die. If they make the saving throw, they take a crap ton of extra damage, like maybe 8d6 or something. Number 10, deck of many things. Oh, come on. Come on, don't tell me you didn't think this wouldn't show up in the list. The tales of how campaign breaking this legendary magic item can be are not exaggerated. If it doesn't break your campaign, it will severely alter its entire course. And my fix for this, simple. Give it to your players around level 17 or so and have fun. That's right. Have fun with it. Because the deck of many things is, is pretty freaking cool. <laughs> Just don't give it to them at fifth level. No, it's Later in the game's better. Let me know down in the comments uh, what you think the most overpowered magic item is. Um, next week, I'm gonna be swallowing my axe while it's on fire. And um, But until then, click right here to see what happened when our dungeon master gave us the deck of many things. And uh, oh yeah, and until next time, uh, let's play, let's play Call of Cthulhu, Dungeons and Dragons.